Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let Campaign Assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Tuesday, November 8th. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Rob Litterst, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to be diving into a trend among Chinese retailers, and that is America. With prices rising, Americans have grown increasingly fond of ultra-cheap Chinese e-commerce outlets, and now these companies are setting up shop literally in the U.S. Also, Carvana has seen its stock price drop around 98% from its 2021 highs. What is going on there? Rob's got the story on that. But before we get to all that, a few headlines in tech and business. Let's get crackling. All right. First things first, Airbnb will soon let you see the total price for a booking up front, including those mind boggling cleaning fees. Airbnb once offered this just affordable travel, make you feel like a local kind of selling point. And over time, prices have gone up to really astronomical amounts. And starting next month, they're going to at least be more transparent about those fees up front. So you don't just see them all the way at the end of the booking process. And also, apparently, they're going to let guests review some of these cleaning and checkout instructions that have also become kind of completely unreasonable in some cases. The having to do laundry when they already have a cleaning fee is just ridiculous. This is smart move for Airbnb. Totally agree. There's no reason it costs $200 to clean up right after one night of just like sleeping in an apartment. It's ridiculous. All right, moving along. Amazon's fleet of over a thousand electric Rivian trucks have delivered already over 5 million packages since rolling out of the lot in July. In 2019, then-CEO Jeffrey Bezos announced a deal with the EV startup Rivian to buy 100,000 of their specially made Amazon vans, which he said should be on the road by 2024. Fast forward to yesterday, the company now expects to have the whole 100,000 of the vans on the road by 2030, but they're making progress, so that's good to see. I haven't seen any of the Amazon vans, but I did see a Rivian truck, and it's a good-looking automobile. It's a clean-looking truck. In other news, the U.S. Department of Justice said it seized $3.36 billion in stolen Bitcoin during a 2021 raid of James Zong's house in Georgia. It's the department's second largest financial seizure ever. Also, we've got a deal. Walgreens-backed Village MD is buying Summit Health and its network of medical practices and urgent care centers in an $8.9 billion deal. Swedish engineers developed the first ever female car crash dummy. Currently, tests just use a smaller version of a male dummy as their female dummy. They don't have a dummy that's actually designed to look like a female's body, which surprised me a lot, actually. Also, Twitter's daily user growth has reportedly hit all-time highs under Elon Musk's ownership, according to documents obtained by The Verge. And lastly, an iPhone factory in China has been operating at significantly reduced capacity amid some COVID-19 restrictions there, and customers could see longer waits for new iPhone 14s as a result. All right, Rob, now let's talk about Carvana. Why is its stock down over 90% from a year ago? Yeah, I mean, they, I think, are one of the ultimate COVID boom stocks that just went crazy during the pandemic. In March of 2020, Carvana's stock price was at $29.35. A little more than a year later, in August of 2021, it was at $360.98. Now fast forward another year and it's at $7.39. So it has been a wild, wild ride, pun intended, for Carvana over the last couple of years. And honestly, I think it's really two things that are to blame here. First of all, it's just this idea that people are going back to shopping in person. 
The second thing, I don't know how many times we need to harp on this. I feel like it impacts everything we write about right now. But the interest rates, the interest rates have gone up. The baseline interest rate is way up, Mm -hmm. which makes it way harder to finance a car. And that's just had a really, really negative impact on demand, even though used car prices, which were absolutely crazy, have been coming down. I think they've come down on average every month for the last five months. Mm -hmm. So prices are coming down, but it's kind of that same pickle that the housing market is in right now. The prices are lower, but the interest rates are so high that financing is so much more expensive than people can afford. Mm. And so it's just crushing demand. Zach shared something today that Wells Fargo's mortgage requests are down like 90% year over year or something. And it seems like it's kind of a similar situation for the auto market. Well, still a fan of their vending machines, their car vending machines. (laughs) Hey, stock price is one thing. You can't put a price on seeing a car vending machine (laughs) when you're driving through boring as Arkansas, (laughs) wherever you are, you know, it's pretty amazing. All right. So JC, we've written about Xi'an a bunch. They're kind of like a fast fashion juggernaut out of China. Something interesting that's going on here, they're starting to move some of their operations to the United States. What's kind of behind this? Yeah. So it's kind of a broader trend we're seeing, not just with Xi'an, but with other Chinese companies, but they're really leading the way. Selling things for cheap, I think, has long been kind of the winning strategy for Chinese retailers and products for a long time. Uh But with inflation persisting and prices going up the last couple of years, Chinese e-commerce companies are increasingly focused on their American patrons who are increasingly fond of these super- ultra dirt cheap Chinese e-commerce brands. And Shein is really probably the leading one of those in the fashion retail space. So they're a fast fashion retailer, which means they rapidly design and launch clothing and ship it directly from their factories and facilities in China to US customers. So their selling point is they sell things for dirt cheap and it's really trendy, but their disadvantage is it takes a little long for them to arrive because it's coming from China. They put out like 10,000 new styles per week. Like it's insane. And it does really well for them. They're on track for some $24 billion in sales this year. Sheesh. They saw first quarter sales grow 43% year over year. For comparison, H&M saw sales drop 10% year over year that quarter. Jeez. So they're really popular and they've really made a great name for themselves. But now they're looking to reduce that wait time, that 10 to 15 day wait time for customers by setting up U.S. distribution centers that are going to focus on their kind of basic items, seasonal items, things that they can ship in bulk. Interesting. Which kind of switches their business model a little bit, but they seem to think it'll be a worthwhile bet. Analysts question whether that will force them to raise their prices, bulk shipments will draw larger tariff charges, can risk inventory challenges, things like that. And like you mentioned, Sheehan also draws a lot of criticism for its environmental impact and also their labor issues. I was looking at one investigation which found Sheehan employees are working 18-hour workdays with one day off a month, making four cents per item they produce. And with the U.S. presence increasing, I can only expect that kind of criticism towards them to grow. Yeah, wow. But like I said, this is not just Xi'an. It's really a trend across a bunch of Chinese companies, TikTok being one of them. TikTok is hiring for dozens of roles to help build out its own U.S. fulfillment centers from scratch. And, you know, the roles are based out of Seattle, Washington, which is a huge wink wink at Amazon. Oh, yeah. And another app, Timu, has rapidly climbed to the top of the app charts. And they are one of these stores that offer just dirt cheap prices on basically anything you could think of. A quick search, you'll find things like sneakers for $6, kitchen appliances for $2, Wow, crazy things like that. Okay. So I've heard of Timu, but I didn't know what they sell. That's super interesting. I think you wrote in your piece, they are kind of like a sister company to Pinduoduo. Yeah. They're like the US sibling. Wild. Yeah. Because Pinduoduo does crazy business in China and they do that whole community shopping thing, right? Like you can chip in together to buy like a certain amount of any type of produce or whatever it might be. Their model is really wild. I mean, I'm looking at these prices and I'm like, no wonder why Pinduoduo has 730 million users. They have 730 <laughs> million. That's crazy. Yeah. So long story short, we're seeing Chinese brands pop up more and more in the US and we'll probably only see more of it unless some kind of legislation comes up or something. But I don't expect that to happen anytime soon. They just move so fast. Yeah. 
All right, bada bing, bada boom. That is going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you are not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have a terrific Tuesday and we'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.